Hey guys, what's going on? Been uh, a couple days kind of busy waiting on a, a couple things to show up here. And uh, what I got here is a Fox Ear Predator Micro. So I have been waiting really honestly since I saw this, I think the first time on and it might have been Joshua Bardwell's channel. I saw this camera and I was like, wow, that really looks good. Uh, the Micro or the Mini, they looked great. I normally fly Eagle 2s, the CMOS cameras. I used to fly CCDs all the time and they were great, but the CMOS cameras have came such a long way now that... I wanted to give them a try, so I switched pretty much to the Eagle 2. Love it. best One of the best cameras that there is still. I have it pretty much on all of my frames, except for the Proton 5.5 here, because the Proton uh, Skeleton Edition actually uses a micro camera. So I didn't have any actual micro cameras laying around, except for these uh, Caddx uh, Turbo Micro uh, cameras. I picked a couple of them up. I think they were like on sale or something for like around 20 bucks. And it, you know, it's always nice to just have a couple backup uh, cheap cameras because you never know when things are gonna happen. And they come with all the different frames and stuff so you can pretty much make them fit everything. I might have an issue without some kind of amount getting them into the reverb uh, because the reverb side plates are a little bit thicker and I did and I, I don't think these come with that full size type of bracket like that uh, but you pretty much get spoiled when you use a great FPV camera and it you really can't backtrack from what I found going to that Eagle 2 and then going to this Caddx camera, the Caddx camera, yes, it works good and the image is acceptable, but the colors were not very good and the overall image is just kind of washed out. And when you fly at dusk or even at sunrise, when you're flying into the sun, it has a really hard time coping in, with that bright light and giving you something that's like balanced to fly through. So enter the Predator Mini, which is the same size pretty much as all the other micro cameras that, I'm sorry, the Predator Micro, it's the same size that are all the micro cameras that are out there uh, by Runcam, the Caddx, uh, whatever. All the connections are pretty much the same, comes with your standard OSD type of connection and OSD right there and the little pigtail, which is kind of nice because the Caddx uh, OSD cable actually is really long and you have to trim it in order uh, to keep it to keep it usable. So you have to actually shorten it yourself. It doesn't come with like a nice little extension dongle. So, hey, what's going on, Wes? Everything looking and sounding all right out there? Seems to be doing pretty good on the stream here. So really this isn't a groundbreaking video or nothing like that. I'm just kind of hanging out here, talk to you guys a little bit while I'm doing this, like doing this kind of stuff. Uh, this is a closer look at the Proton frame. I always got to show off the Proton just because... I think besides besides my reverb, it's definitely probably the best frame that I've ever owned. You know, at five and a half with running five and a half inch props and nuts and everything like that, it comes in at 350 grams without the GoPro. Running 5s on this thing, uh, 1300s or 1600s. You know, I can get anywhere from a Four, three and a half to four minute rip to a seven and a half to eight minute cruise. The way Mike has designed this frame, everything is just perfectly made and has a position, starting with, you know, the TPU mounts here that everybody's kind of seeing that fold up and go on to your standoffs. 
That's uh, where the camera's going to screw into. He's got this this thing here on the back, which is made for an axie, but I got rid of the axie because it just doesn't work as well as at range because the GoPro is blocking it, everything on the way back. So I put the long uh, pagoda on here. And right here is uh, the top plate with the cool GoPro mount that just clips in there. And then four screws, one, two, three, four, into the standoffs and boom, everything's done. Uh, quick side profile look there. Um, I got the flight controller, Joshua Bardwell down here. I got all the different uh, butter mounts extra stacked up in here to keep everything uh, really nice and soft. And the cool thing about all the flight club frames per, uh, is that he has the butter mounts built into them, which basically means that these grommets are re are inside the frame here and the bolts go right up through them so your bolts never touch the frame you don't pick up any vibrations uh more than likely you've seen my videos if not check them out you won't see any kind i mean you it, they're the easiest long range rigs or medium range whatever you want to say rigs to tune there's no soft mounts here on the motors i put uh he sends you an extra carbon fiber plate to put on top of the stack there. And I've got the Unify Pro just stuck down right there all nice and neat. You could even, I did order some taller standoffs just to have a little bit more room. I got plenty of room here with these standoffs if, I, if you want to do a 4-in-1 ESC. I raised the flight controller up a little bit because there is a notch out in here. Which you can see right there. It's where like your normal free sky stuff will fit down in there and you can have access to your bind button. I actually have my crossfire in there. So it almost fits perfectly flat, but it's a little cockeyed in there, but it's got a, it's got a home. And all I do is just have the moral T coming out the right there and boom, done. Easy, real good. So that's pretty much a look at the actual frame itself. So we can go ahead and get the camera installed. I went ahead and took the old harness off and tinned the pads again. It's the real cool thing about the Bardwell flight controller is that you can, I can zoom in here like a little bit more. So maybe you could see just how cool it is if you guys are into the cl racing f4s you know you love the bardwell controllers but you can just see how big and accessible like all the pads are like this whole front row of pads is the camera stuff that next row of pads is for regular receivers um and since i'm using crossfire all my stuff is soldered in on the the back so just a perfect setup everything just just has a place and it fits um i was looking to pick up a second one but kind of concerned about like parts availability because you know mike's kind of a small i mean he's not small and the proton's hot and everybody's buying them for racing season and stuff this year so i went to pick up a second one and they're all he's he's always out of like either the skeleton top or the five and a half inch arms or something like that and so i'll probably just pick up i don't know uh, people say this these things crash really good i haven't crashed mine yet you know really long range crashing just kind of flying around and stuff with it so i shouldn't have any problems with that um but i'm trying to like standardize everything and a couple of you might have saw my uh, martian two frame and i put a modified XSR on there to see how much range I could get actually got uh, probably two to three times more range still only like a kilometer and you know that's probably just due to like environmentals and stuff like that I know people have gone mild with them and all that kind of stuff but just not in my case but when I flew it it has a Betaflight F3 board on it the XSR uh, multi-shot ESC's that aren't running any special kind of filtering or nothing like that. And man, after flying like the reverb, this and the six inch with like, you know, all the 
so-called newest, latest, greatest stuff. I mean, Kalman filters, uh, BL Heli 32 ESCs, uh, new motors instead of my old steels that were all raunched up. Different tune. It was just, it was just like a dog experience, man. Real dog experience. It was like, oh man, I don't really know if I can, if I want to deal with this. And the whole point of it was to have something to practice with. So, I stole some parts off of it, sold a few things that I had laying around, and picked up um, another reverb frame. It, I have a lot, uh, I had extra uh, Primo motors here, which are definitely my go to motor. These are the 227 2450s. Uh, Richard also has a 228 ver 2208 version out now, which is super popular with people. Um, these are kind of like the Hyperlites, uh, probably like the same manufacturer or whatever, but his own little spin. Super cool dude to deal with out there at Multicopter Builders. Um, you guys definitely, are, if you're looking for some motors, I mean, the magnet, the air gap is just enough to give you, you know, that nice resistance and feel that you want. He's really, pr prices things really fair for you. I can't recommend these enough. So anyway... These will be going on the reverb, uh, the, the reverb number two, as well as some uh, Speedix BL Heli 32 ESCs. So it, consistency wise, it's going to be the exact same setup as this reverb, um, running Crossfire and everything, except I will probably maybe redo the antennas and use the Immortal T on it. I'm not 100% sure yet. Because the Immortal T's can get tore off pretty easy during a crash. And having the L configuration like this and not really wanting to do that far of range with these. Just more of a freestyle acro running CRSF so I have the fastest protocol. This probably is going to be the safest thing for my crossfire. But I'm not 100% sure yet. I also saw a guy that has a 3D print that will actually go over the standoffs here and it's kind of like a little shelf and you can actually put your crossfire on top of that and i really like that idea and i think that might work i might even fire up the 3d printer tonight and see if i can get that uh get that done so i'm just gonna solder this thing up and install this if anybody's got any questions just uh just shoot away we'll just kind of hang out here and see what's happening you turn the iron down a little bit here hopefully my head doesn't get too far in the way well I see it's getting in the way already let me uh, zoom out here a little bit so you don't have to stare at my head the whole time All right, there we go. So, I'm going to put our video wire in here first. volts or nine volts sorry probably should be using tweezers to be a little bit easier with these mounts on here there's that and then the ground There's that, hmm, see, wasn't on there good enough. Let me freshen up this pad here real quick. Back 
to the ground wire. So always one that gets you. New haircut. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, shaved it off. I don't have much left. I mean, you can see right there. There's not much left. I gave up year I gave up years ago. I remember back in the days when I actually had hair and dyed it blonde and all that stuff. Remember that phase that everybody went through? So, before I go doing anything, as far as hooking this up or anything, I suppose I want to check and make sure we got video first. So, props are off. Fire up the camera. The lens cap off. Battery's going dead. Let's see here. We've got five volt. This harness is totally, this harness is totally wired wrong. Look at that. Hopefully I just didn't blow it up. VCC ground and video. The ground and video wires are swapped. That sucks. Huh. Let's see what it says in the instruction manual. Hey, you never know about these things. You got to check these things out sometimes. VCC ground and video. So ground and video are actually swapped on here. That's stupid. Nothing like getting a new camera and having things totally be stupid. what happens when these guys just constantly bring stuff out the quality control another lesson learned double check everything before you start soldering and power stuff up you can never be too careful So, instead of changing the pin colors because I'm lazy, hush up. Let's see for sure. It says VCC ground and video. And I've got VCC video and ground.
totally sucks. Everything's plugged in correctly. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen now? Well, now I got a picture. So I guess that's right. What the hell? That's just so stupid. Well, anyway, if you buy one of these cameras and you can't get it to work, then now you know why. So I'm going to plug in the OSD here and go through and try to turn some stuff off real quick. So I don't want the OSD on because we obviously have OSD already. is getting hot This OSD controller is like the worst one I think I've ever used. Well, it's really slow.
that's pissing me off. We're going to shut that off and we'll go ahead and mount the camera. So camera mounting could not be easier with the Proton and these little mounts. Just going to line up the little TPU pieces and the screws here. And there's one side in and the other one is like right here. So what's everybody up to tonight besides being super entertained by this live stream? Anything cool going on? All right, that's it. Totally mounted. Up, down, left, right. Shouldn't be that difficult, right? It's definitely a great image, though. I can tell you that much. I know you can't see it, but it's an awesome image. I think I got the OSD remote working here now. Looks like it's upside down too. Could be like the worst live stream ever. Oh, I mean, this thing seriously, this, this thing seriously is crazy. It just doesn't want to do anything. The buttons are just so stupid. Turn it off here for a minute. Do I break a lot of the immortal tees? Um, the immortal tees don't break. The problem is, is that the immortal tees will break off your zip ties which will come back and pull off the ufl connector on your crossfire so that's the 
very important part. So I think the best place to mount them is actually on the rear legs like this because obviously if you crash, you think you're going to crash in the front. So that would keep it from getting hit. But these are pretty flexible, you know. So I think if anything, you're going to mess up. I've had like these kind of fall just fall off. Like, I don't know, they just wear out and fall off and whatever. So, but I definitely, definitely think that the, it's the best, easiest case scenario and it's the cleanest because you can see how I have them mounted on the reverb here, you know, in the L and you got the zip ties and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, who wants to deal with that kind of stuff anymore? And then this one on the six inch is even crazier. I mean, I've got this one like really stuck out here a long way, um, you know, because I really go, this is the one I go out like two and a half, three miles with on two watts, just blasting. And then I crap my pants the whole way back just so I can try to make it. Yeah, I love how this OSD just says, oh, just press, just press up and down. Hmm. I almost wonder. Yep, but that's the only way you learn doing all that testing. You got to push it and find out what you can get out of them watch the wind and all that kind of stuff let's see I almost think the OSD buttons and the OSD itself was all messed up too as far as the cable and stuff goes this thing is just Ridiculous. I wonder if any of the other OSD cables work with this thing because this one just sucks exit now Up doesn't work, down doesn't work. Yeah, that's it right there. And nothing moves around like it's supposed to. Like, I swear, I'm trying to like figure this out, like thinking it's like, it's just crazy. I'm gonna see if one of my 
run cam ones work with that because that's just stupid So I have a hundred of these, and whenever you want one, you can't freaking find one. All right, let's see if this works. Fox ear, man. Got to get your stuff together. This one's working better. It's still not 100%, but it's like 50. So much for worrying about having the OSD cable. All right, come on, get on picture adjust. All I want to do is change a couple settings. There we go. I don't want to flip it. So if I remember from the video, I got it pulled up here. Let me pull it up real quick and see what these settings actually were should have wrote these down I didn't realize this was going to be so freaking nut pain in the butt So let me make sure I can navigate to them first. All right, so I can get to color gain. Can I change it?
Wow, this is pretty bad. I can't believe... Wow, what is going on? I don't know. That's just crazy. So, one thing we learned about the Fox here camera, they totally miswired everything. Maybe the harness is miswired for the OSD, too. Maybe that's why it's not working. What does it say here? It says OSD and vSense. Well, that's right. pretty sure though they got these two pins here flipped backwards on this on this board unbelievable i mean why would something like this happen all i want is a good picture it shouldn't be this difficult to make all that happen. Let's just try changing these around and see if that does anything. So when you've been doing this hobby for this many years and you know you've spent so much money on this stuff this is the kind of shit you don't want to deal with I mean this is why people buy ready to fly quads so they don't have to do stuff like this I mean it's 20 it's 2018 we need to be able to trust that our OSD wires are wired correctly and that our wiring harnesses are wired correctly I don't even know if this is a problem. I'm just gonna see if it helps. It might be the problem that everything's just wired, was wired backwards to start with, but then you wouldn't think it would work. Oh, it popped right up. Totally, totally ridiculous. God, this is ridiculous.
I don't know. I just might not be able to ever adjust this camera. It's looking like that way. I mean, unless I'm just super impatient and it's just super slow. I got another goggle battery behind me, thank God. just want to go left and right I mean I've managed to get on to color gain here in the menu and I'm trying to get it to move the slider and now it just went like all the way back out to like the other menu Wow this is just crazy I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to bore you guys with it, though. My Unify smells like it's ready to burn through that carbon fiber plate. I mean, seriously, how does, how does shit like this happen? I mean, this is just nuts. What about if I swap these two on this OSD cable? I mean, seriously, to have to go through all this? This is just crazy. This camera better be damn good. It's definitely going to be the last Fox Ear I buy. I mean, come on. If, I, if you have to imagine somebody going to like their hobby store and buying this and this is why stuff is so expensive because like you know somebody's gonna just gonna send this back and they're gonna be like hey this camera is a piece of shit I want my money back you know, which and all they have all the right to do that when you have to deal with something like this. But you know, I'm trying to like work through it and make it work. Definitely with either remote, it doesn't go down. It just wants to go up. <laughs> this is like a fun game. Oh shit, now it's in... Now it's in chi Chinese. Oh man. No way. Espanol. Oh no. Oh, Jesus, it's all messed up now. You gotta be kidding me. What if 
piece of work. Adjust that image in. Yeah, but the problem is, is like, I'm the idiot now that's going to sit here and mess with this all night because it's just going to drive me freaking crazy. Starting with getting the language back to what it should be. Shut up, battery. Oh man, like now what am I in? It looks like Russian. And I don't think I'll be able, I don't know if I can get it back or not because like, oh wait a minute, let me just try this. There we go. I just didn't save it. I don't know. Maybe I should try to hook up uh, camera control now. See how that works. Well, it doesn't matter. I can't mess with it now because my Unify is just like cooking. I don't want that to happen. that better with the stream yes I am on uh, Instagram yeah it does totally need a mouse Yeah, I think I'm just a uh, chatty C on uh, like that with three B's. On Instagram. So everybody is saying that the menu is like super, super slow.
well, maybe, maybe that's my problem. It literally, it's like, but even like the buttons, like up and down, don't do like anything. Something about not holding the button down, huh? All right, let's try this again and see if I just like tap the button if it will like do something. So. So I tapped it and hit the down button and like nothing. Who the hell knows? I've already like switched all these wires around on this thing. I don't know what the hell is going on now. Maybe Yeah, it's the worst thing This is like one of the worst things ever Like, it's like freaking This is like ridiculous that it, it's like this What's that other Caddix box? Maybe the, maybe the not, maybe the generic Caddix remote control will work better. It's like got a thing at the top. See, this is what I say about not changing things around, trying to standardize crap. This is just insane. Well, I definitely believe it. Could have swore though like i watched like barbell's videos and he didn't say anything about it but bonafide pirate did he said that it was slow but he didn't say it was like unusable i mean granted he probably he got his sent to him for free 
so he's probably not allowed to say that it's the worst OSD connector ever created or cable or whatever So going down definitely doesn't work. I can pretty much attest to that. I've not been able to get it to go down. It just go it wants to go up and that's it. Holy shit, this is just, this is nuts. I mean, how does this even happen? How long have we been on here? Like an hour? I mean, come on. This is like, I'm supposed to be a, pro a professional here or something. People are going to watch this and think I'm an idiot. This is just insane. I mean, come. Camera ID off. No, now I want to go down. Just go down. Why won't you just go down? What the hell is this? I don't want it to do that. Like I think I, I think like that post said it's just like the connection or something you know what this reminds me of it reminds me of whenever you try to hook up some of these cameras to beta flight and the camera control feature doesn't work because like the resistance isn't correct I mean that's basically what it seems like it's doing is that like the resistance isn't correct so it's not like recognizing you know the toggles correctly so it's almost like you, you need to wire maybe wire a resistor in between on the signal wire to see if that were or on the ground I, I can't remember if it's on the signal wire or on the ground wire
Thought I was working out a system there. But definitely not. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a pretty funny guy, I guess. I try to be. Try to have a good time with life. You know, we all got to work, go to work for the man tomorrow. And deal with all that craziness. Jeez. All right. I can't take it anymore. My Unify is like freaking hot. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, seriously, whatever. I don't even know which way these wires are supposed to go now. I probably got it all jacked up. I know the signal wire comes out of there like that. So if we match up wires and connectors, it goes like that. And then when we get to here, I can't tell if signal is supposed to be on the left or the right. It doesn't really tell you. Just can't leave well enough alone. The center button works. You can get into the OSD. seriously wonder if only like two of these buttons work and not all of them which isn't going to be very helpful because what if you need to slide your color slider the other way Oh man, now it's got it flipped. No, oh, I don't want that. Off. Alright, now I'm on color gain. So let's see if anything responds here.
Let's see here. I might be I might be on to something here it's kind of how you like press the buttons if that makes any sense like you kind of gotta like be real soft with them and it works Kinda. Yeah, soft do not fondle. No kidding. set to oh I'm going the wrong way how am I going to get it to go that way ah there we go. Ah, oh, damn it. This is ridiculous. crazy the white wire coming out of the camera should be going to the black wire to the remote right 
I don't know. I've got these things all switched around now because nothing was working and they were kind of flip flopped anyway. I mean, I can try to flip these cables again, I guess. I don't know. It seems to not matter if they're flipped or not. It's freaking working one way or the other. It works the same. One's really not any better than the other. The Caddix gods are totally getting revenge on me or something here. I don't know. All right. Let's see. I knew they'd be coming out with a micro eagle eventually. I should have just waited. Then I wouldn't have had to deal with this shit. Who knows? It might it might take me that long anyway to figure this out. So I got picture adjust off again, which is good. Or camera ID, I mean. All right, now I'm in picture adjust. Let's see how far off the footage looks amazing, huh? When did it come out? One thirty five, one twenty, one hundred. go up
I'm definitely getting closer here. It's allowing me to make some changes, just very slowly. Change the languages again. I wonder I wonder if it's came out yet though or if they just sent him a review copy they probably just sent him a review copy That Unify is hot. All right. Let me just try this one more time here. See if I can get anywhere with this. I've said one more time like five times
All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is just at least try to get this to where I can get the camera ID off. just be able to fly the damn thing. Cause now I can't see my OSD. I guess I have better luck with this remote. That remote doesn't seem to be doing much. the camera ID off save all all right I got that unbelievable I just can't believe that this is really what's happening here I wonder if camera control would be any better <sighs> I 
that really sucks too. So I'm really looking forward to this camera. I didn't have this happen. Let's see, so the white one is supposed to be it shows the stupid port from the front. Lucky. Well, if anything, I should definitely get an A for effort. Got some extra run cam OSD wires. Maybe it's just a crap wire that goes in. Uh, that's not going to work. So 
I think the only wires I haven't changed are these. What if these are wrong? Might as well try. Can't hurt anything at this point. All right, guys, well, I'm not gonna bore you with this anymore. If I figure this out, I'll let you know. This is just getting crazy. So it's almost time for bed. Sorry, I didn't really teach you anything here except for that this thing's pretty much a piece of crap. I'm out.